Well, who says we have to fold the inner conductor of the transmission line outwards at all? What if we just let it extend straight into the area of the tumor, like here? In this case, we would have what's called a monopole antenna. The left side of the slide shows this arrangement with a monopole antenna extending away from the transmission line, probably a coaxial cable. The right side of this slide shows some simulation results for heating caused by this antenna. What do you think? Do you think this antenna is working well for this application? Looking at the results on the right, we do see heating around the antenna, but we also see the heating extending up the transmission line. Here the, the transmission line f ends right here. So we're seeing quite a bit of heating up the length of the transmission line. And this is caused by currents generated on the outside of the outer conductor. This is not ideal because it expands the heating zone and makes it harder to only heat up the tumor and none of the surrounding healthy tissue. So can we try to further improve this model? Well, there are two conductors, both the inner and the outer conductors. It makes sense to extend the inner conductor like a monopole so it can radiate. But what about the outer conductor? One idea that these researchers came up with is that we can turn the second outer conductor arm into a helix. You can see that here. The combination of the monopole antenna at the center and the helix acts like a dipole antenna. Together, these are still make two arms of a dipole antenna. But one arm is the monopole and the other arm is the helix. The currents in these two arms flow in opposite directions and destructively interfere at the feed point. That's right here. So here is the feed point. And this helps to prevent, because they're flowing in opposite directions, the current is flowing in opposite directions at the feed point. The current, it prevents the current from flowing on the outer surface up the outer conductor on the outside. On the right, you can see that this hybrid helix provides a much more spherical heating zone. Now, these are from simulations, these results. So what if we wanted to do some experiments with this antenna design to see how well it works? What do you think we could use in place of a real tumor in our experiment to see if we can replicate these results? Well, the authors of this paper decided to use raw egg white, and that raw egg white allowed them to easily see the area that is heated and how it evolves over time. And first they had to measure the dielectric properties of the egg white, and they did this using the same kind of techniques you're learning in the labs for this class, a network analyzer and a dielectric probe kit. Lastly, another benefit of this hybrid helix antenna is that it can be designed to be mechanically flexible and maneuverable. This is particularly important when heating tumors in the lung, for example, because a rigid antenna apparently increases the likelihood of causing a collapsed lung. So actually in this case, if we have a flexible and a maneuverable antenna and also a flexible co coaxial cable transmission line, is it possible that we could avoid making an incision through the skin and the tissues at all? And indeed, in many cases, what we could do is we could use a catheter to get the antenna to the tumor, which would reduce the recovery time of the patient even more because they wouldn't really be going through surgery at all. Here is our coaxial cable and taking the antenna, the hybrid helix antenna, to the location of the tumor. Take out your in-class project notebook and describe how we might be able to use a hybrid helix antenna that is, as needed, inserted into the body to where the tumor is located using a catheter, making it very non-invasive. Also make a note about how we could calculate what the radiated fields look like from our proposed antenna by dividing up the antenna into infinitesimally short segments and integrating the results for a Hertzian dipole antenna along each infinitesimally short segment of the monopole and helix. So, first of all, the fact that we can use a hybrid helix and a catheter. And the second one is how we can determine the radiation by dividing up our hybrid helix 
into those infinitesimally short segments and use the results for Hertzian dipole.